The first example is from 2007. It is part of an international conference being held by the company called Cisco. The man on the left is at the conference center in Bangalore, India. The two men on the right are on stage in India as holograms, but they are actually in San Jose, California. So at this time, I'd like to beam up Martin De Beers and Chuck Stuckey back from San Jose. Martin, I'm beaming you up now with my spatial controls. How are you doing? <laughs> hey, Chuck, how are you Hi, doing? John. We're doing great, thank you. Hey, John. Hey, guys. You know, yesterday, Martin, you looked a little bit bigger than me. I hope today we're going to play with some sizes and we'll kind of give the audience an idea how we can make variations on that. I believe so, John. I'll tell you, it's been a long day here in California. You know, we were up here at 3 a.m. our time. We're still wearing the same shirts. And we had a 5.6 magnitude earthquake about an hour ago. So uh, I'm here to tell you, though, that everything's fine. We've had no major damage here in San Jose. Uh -huh. And, uh, you know, as a global company, we'll continue to operate. Well, you know, it's amazing. You can see each other as though we were playing poker. I can see you sweat a little bit. Uh, I can see that you both shaved since the last time I saw you. But we don't have the sense of smell yet. But it is... Uh, that that is a good thing, John. <laughs> In the holographic universe, Michael Talbot said, it is relatively easy to understand this idea of holism in something that is external to us, like an apple in a hologram. What makes this difficult is that we are not looking at the hologram. We are part of the hologram. The two men on the right can touch each other, and they look very real to each other. That's because they are part of the hologram. But if the man on the left went over to where the other two men are standing, he could pass his hand through them and feel nothing. That's because he's outside the hologram. Remember that. It's a very important point. It was easy to tell who was a hologram and who wasn't in that example from Cisco. But now watch the video produced just three years later, an advertisement for something called the DVE Immersion Room. This is the DVE Immersion Room. It just won the Global Telepresence Video Conferencing Product of the Year Award. And what I'm about to experience, so I've been told, absolutely has to be seen to be believed. The DVE Immersion Room takes video conferencing to a whole new level. And I must say, I'm already very impressed with this luxury boardroom environment. Hi, Sarah. I'm David, your uh, Immersion Room Tour Guide. This is amazing. You're in 3D. Hi. Hi, I am glad that we could get together this way via real telepresence. That's what you're experiencing, real telepresence. It's the best way for people to connect around the world, and it's truly a revolutionary way for people to collaborate. This is beyond my experience. It looks like you're right here. Right, I am. I'm right here via real telepresence. It's over a high bandwidth network connection. Here, let me show you. This is a nine foot wide volumetric 3D image that appears over the boardroom table. This will take your presentations to a whole new level. And that's just one example. Uh, this is the most realistic teleprison system ever developed. And it's also an advanced simulation environment for business, education, scientific research, and defense. So where are you exactly? Well, I am in Irvine, California. But anyone can connect in this personal way to anywhere else in the world. I mean, it's virtually limitless. London, New York, Tokyo, you name the city and we can make telepresence happen there. I can easily see leaders of corporations, diplomats, even heads of state in the immersion room. It breaks down the barrier of distance like we're all here in the same room. Exactly. Today, holograms are being used in the most creative of ways, in music concerts. First, there was Carrie Underwood as a hologram, joining Brad Paisley on stage to do a duet. We keep saying that we're okay. I don't want to settle for good, not great. I miss the way it fell back down. Oh, 
Then Snoop Dogg and Dr. Dre brought Tupac Shakur back to life via hologram on stage in a concert in Coachella. Hey, it's Snoop Dogg performing with Tupac at Coachella this... Wait a second! Tupac still alive? Yeah! Do you know what the f*** this is? Nope! Very confused right now! Dr. Dre and Snoop Dogg performed at Coachella last night with Tupac Shakur. What the f*** is that, Coachella? But how is this possible? Tupac died in 96! This defies everything we know as human beings! It was a hologram of Tupac. Okay, yes, it's a hologram. Tupac is still dead. But this was freaking amazing! Behold the resurrection of Tupac! He comes like rising up from the bottom of the stage. And then you'll never guess what happened! He's been shot by a hologram of Biggie! Or they just turned off the hologram machine. It was so cool. It was very cool! Apparently plans are in the works to do the same with Elvis, although he never really died, of course. And now they're talking about bringing Marilyn Monroe back for a live concert via hologram. Michael Talbot said, creating the illusion that things are located where they are not is the quintessential feature of a hologram. If you look at a hologram, it seems to have extension in space. But if you pass your hand through it, you will find there is nothing there. Despite what your senses tell you, no instrument will pick up any energy or substance where the hologram appears to be hovering. This is because a hologram is a virtual image, an image that appears to be where it is not. So here's the point. Many highly respected quantum physicists are telling us, based on the latest research, that we are living in a hologram, that our reality is a virtual image, an illusion that isn't real. University of London physicist David Bohm, for example, believes that despite its apparent solidity, the universe is at heart a phantasm, a gigantic and splendidly detailed hologram. Dr. Jacob D. Beckenstein, professor of theoretical physics at the Hebrew University of Jerusalem, said an astonishing theory called the holographic principle holds that the universe is like a hologram. The physics of black holes, immensely dense concentrations of mass, provides a hint that the principle might be true. There is a famous TV program on the Discovery Channel called NOVA, and in November of 2011 they broadcast a show called The Fabric of the Cosmos, What is Space? It was hosted by Brian Greene, theoretical physicist and professor of physics at Columbia University, who wrote the book called The Fabric of the Cosmos. Here is a five-minute video clip from that program. 
As we examine the fabric of the cosmos ever more closely, we may well find far more surprises than anyone ever imagined. Take me, for example. I seem real enough, don't I? Well, yes. But surprising new clues are emerging that everything, you and I and even space itself, may actually be a kind of hologram. That is, everything we see and experience, everything we call our familiar three-dimensional reality, may be a projection of information that's stored on a thin, distant, two-dimensional surface. Sort of the way the information for this hologram is stored on this thin piece of plastic. Now, holograms are something we're all familiar with, from the security symbol you find on most credit cards. But the universe is a hologram? That's one of the most drastic revisions to our picture of space and reality ever proposed. And the evidence for it comes from some of the strangest realms of space, black holes. This is a real disconnect and it's very hard to get your head around. Modern ideas coming from black holes tell us that reality is two-dimensional that the three-dimensional world, the full-bodied three-dimensional world, is a kind of image of a hologram on the boundary of the region of space. This is a very strange thing. When I was a younger physicist, I would have thought any physicist who said that was absolutely crazy. Here's a way to think about this. Imagine I took my wallet and threw it into a black hole. What would happen? We used to think that since nothing, not even light, can escape the immense gravity of a black hole, my wallet would be lost forever. But it now seems that may not be the whole story. Recently, scientists exploring the math describing black holes made a curious discovery. Even as my wallet disappears into the black hole, a copy of all the information it contains seems to get smeared out and stored on the surface of the black hole in much the same way that information is stored in a computer. So, in the end, my wallet exists in two places. There's a three-dimensional version that's lost forever inside the black hole and a two-dimensional version that remains on the surface as information. The information content all the stuff that fell into that black hole can be expressed entirely in terms of just the outside of the black hole. The idea then is that you can capture what's going on inside the black hole by referring only to the outside. And in theory, I could use the information on the outside of the black hole to reconstruct my wallet. And here's the truly mind-blowing part. Space within a black hole plays by the same rules as space outside a black hole or anywhere else. So if an object inside a black hole can be described by information on the black hole surface, then it might be that everything in the universe, from galaxies and stars to you and me, even space itself, is just a projection of information stored on some distant two-dimensional surface that surrounds us. In other words, what we experience as reality may be something like a hologram. Is the three-dimensional world an illusion in the same sense that a hologram is an illusion? Perhaps. I think, I'm inclined to think, yes, that the three-dimensional world is a kind of illusion and uh, that the ultimate precise reality is the two-dimensional reality at the surface of the universe. This idea is so new that physicists are still struggling to understand it. But if it's right, just as Newton and Einstein completely changed our picture of space, we may be on the verge of an even more dramatic revolution.